This is Leonardo da Vinci. His most famous paintings are the Mona Lisa and the Last Supper. The next painting is Salvatore Mundi that translates to Jesus as Savior of the World. It was painted between 1510 and 1515 and purchased in 2017 for 450 million US dollars. These photographs show the route to the top of the hill. Along the way, notice the cactus called the Choya, C-H-O-L-L-A. They are mean. They'll stick to your clothing, break off, and penetrate your skin. Avoid them. This video is from the parking lot underneath the fence that you have to crawl through and up to the top of the hill. It is not known who created these petroglyphs, but it is probably the Paiute Indians. Now, as we hike across this land, uh, let's have a brief review of Paiute Indian history. They originally occupied an area of approximately 30 million acres in Utah, California, Nevada, Oregon, and northern Arizona. Their culture was primarily one of hunting and gathering wandering across these lands. Their homes were wiki-ups made from local brush, making them highly mobile. That is, just leave. Then the Mormons arrived in 1851 and colonized this area. After 25 years, Paiute access to their traditional hunting gathering areas was highly restrictive. That is, the Mormons controlled all land and water resources and made the Paiutes dependent on them for survival. While not intentional, the result was a severe reduction of their population from millions to thousands across all occupied states, especially here in Utah. Finally, in 1891, the Paiutes were given federally protected land in the form of a reservation on the Santa Clara River, west of St. George. Yet they were not recognized federally as a viable tribe, therefore not given any services by the government. For example, in August 1953, Utah's federal Senator Watkins included the Utah tribe to be terminated from all federal support. That was just another economic disaster for Pius. Anyway, after extensive efforts for their preservation on 3 April 1980, President Carter signed legislation that made federal recognition of these tribes permanent, paving the way to their survival. Currently, there are two reservations, one in Arizona at the town of Moapa, northern part, and the other one is east of Kanab, Utah, near Pipe Spring. This is a unique extended boulder with a few petroglyphs. At the far end, there is an excellent view of the valley, the river, and the highway, and a picnic and or camping place if you wish. This small and faint petroglyph is difficult to ascertain its purpose, but it appears to be a duck at the bottom and maybe some type of insects above it. This petroglyph has, is as abstract as they get. Could it be a flying mosquito or a bug of some kind? Well, crude, at least you can ascertain this is a man with extended arms and a few fingers. Red Boulder 5. This is the most interesting. It appears to be a headless man reaching down for a horned sheep. Okay, we are at the top, and from this point on, it will be going across and downhill, quite scenic, and the river will always be in view. That segment will be at a higher speed to save time. From here to Newspaper Rock, we follow the contour, and then uh, we'll go straight down to Newspaper Rock. The camera 
juggle, and the camera image juggles a lot because I don't have a gyroscope in my poor GoPro. But anyway, as you walk along, again, look at the loose gravel so you have the right shoes. Look at the various rocks, their formations, their colors. And most unique are huge rocks or boulders with other rocks embedded in them of totally different color and structure. It's a scenic hike looking down at the river and mountains. So enjoy yourself and be careful of the loose rocks. Step on them bef and test before you put your full weight. This is a very important location. On the way back, suggest going back the same route, identical same route as you came down. If you continue straight, that is south, there are many social trails that lead to dead ends and you'll have to crawl up steep rock <laughs> boulders up to the top. So remember, this spot, turn right when you come back. In the distance is a large boulder. That is newspaper rock. Surprisingly, there's 
only one very crude petroglyph on that uh, flat black rock. Very unusual. Do not touch the rock or these images as your oil and salt from your hands will damage them. We drew a black line of the most complex image that joins a man, a woman, and presumably a child. Notice that only two simple geometric designs are present that are one spiral and one circle, two bow and arrow hunters. The starburst design on the rock is most interesting. The route is to the river and then left following the Virgin River. The river originates from two branches east of Zion National Park. One flows through Zion, the Narrows, popular hiking, while the other flows south of Zion. It is partially close to hiking because of some ancient Indian ruins there, close at uh, the Barracks Canyon. Both rivers merge south of Zion near the town of Rockville. Eventually it flows into Lake Mead. No major dams were erected on this river, allowing massive flash floods, destroying pioneer farms along the river, especially in Ghost Town, <laughs> Grafton Ghost Town. They also rage through the park itself, washing out parking areas, etc., and all the way down to St. George. The town of Hurricane Pioneers built a dam on the river in 1893 to redirect water to their village and farms by manually, that's, this is a pickaxe and a wheelbarrow, building a seven and a half mile or 12 kilometer long canal that ended at Hurricane and the water was dispersed among the farmers. Remnants of that dam still remain on the river. Uh, to see it, access is off Highway 9 at milepost 15.7 and then uh, south to the river itself. The other small dam routes water to Quail Lake. It was, uh, the construction there was completed in 1987. The trail to Da Vinci follows the Virgin River. And you can see I-15 bridge going over the Virgin River. The length of this highway from Los Angeles to Canadian border is 1,400 miles. A road from Los Angeles to Salt Lake City was always needed. The first such road, called Arrowhead, was built in the 1910s, a dirt road. Then in the 1940s, Highway 91 from Littlefield to St. George was built. It was paved, but the problem was many curves, and in the winter, the snow prevented all travel for both trucks and commercial. And with the increase in cars, it became obsolete. Well, the governor of Utah and Arizona cooperated together to fund this road. Now, Arizona had very little to gain commercially from this, but because of the relationship between the governors, they agreed to it. Very commendable. Well, the purpose was to totally replace 91, Highway 91. It took 12 years to cut through the gorge following the Virgin River. About 4 million cubic yards of rock, dirt were removed. That's uh, about 3 million cubic meters. It cut down 500 feet of the cliffs, revealing its multi-layer geological history. Now recall, originally these mountains were here, it was all flat sediment, layers upon layers upon layers. And then the geology, tectonic plates, etc., forced this area up. And as you drive through, you can see these layers vertically. Really ast astounding display of geology. Anyway, it was completed in 1973. Da Vinci's Vitruvian Man images on a 13 and a half by 10 inch paper drawn in 1490. It depicts a nude man in two precise images. One is contained in a square, the other in a circle. The standing image is confined within the square except for part of his left foot. 
The other is an X position with his arms extended above his shoulders and legs spread, each about 18 degrees. His eyes are intense, staring at the viewer. The head is bordered by thick curly hair. According to da Vinci, these proportions represent the ideal human body. It is stored in a museum in Venice, Italy and rarely shown due to light sensitivity. Okay, this panel appears to be made by one person due to lack of other images there. Notice the row of dots on the right hand side. One small size and the other one larger size. Lower left of the circle is what appears to be a sun. Within the circle itself is a cloud with rain. The long vertical line with two opposing spirals appears to be a map. If it were not a map, then it would be a straight line, but to and from where is unknown. This colored cove can't be seen on the way to Da Vinci panel, but certainly evident on the way back. Amazingly, the tall vertical spire has no petroglyphs anywhere. The colors that you see inside are similar to those at Cottonwood Cove and White Pockets at the Pariah Plateau at Vermilion Cliffs. It almost looks like uh, cake batter where you mix two different types of cake together. As shown, this journey is more than just looking at two simple petroglyphs in some remote area of Utah where very few people go. So we hope you enjoyed this video and goodbye, adios, auf Wiedersehen and sayonara.